Hey class, today I'm going to teach you about text structures as you watch along. You can um, write your own notes or take in consideration what I am speaking about. So, text structures. I'm going to keep moving so you can see this pretty well. So, what are they? It's basically structures of a text. So when I think about structures, I think about houses. I think about creations of buildings. I think of foundational things to create something to be secure. Structures. Specifically, let's think about text. So we think about a book. And that's why I have a little house and a building. So what is it? It is a foundational structure of a text of what we read. Kind of putting a structure and then creating, thinking about a text and moving forward. So it is how a text is created. It is the foundation of a text, just like this, okay? It is how an author builds the text organization. So are they gonna write it in a certain way? Yes, if you were the author and you had to write about bees or penguins or the earth's atmosphere, you would have to think about how am I going to write and organize my thoughts so someone understands it deeper? Then the author uses specific words to identify the text structure. So they use words that say problem, or this is the effect of this, or the time of this is 1981. All of those things are clues that the author has given us for us to understand the structure of how they are writing. So text structure. It's created for a certain way. If you were an author, you would write it in a certain way for someone else to read in the idea and getting the main idea that you want across. So there are four text structures. Chronological problem solution, cause and effect, and compare and contrast. Chronological order means time. Chrono is time. So if the, if the text, the nonfiction informational text, gives time and dates, that is chronological. Okay, promotes steps or events in time order. Now, if you kind of can't put it in a timeline. So you can't say in 1812 this happened, then in um, 1817 this happened because the text doesn't tell you those dates. But it says first this happened, then do this. Next, last, those words are going to indicate sequence of events, which is under chronological order, but it's still a different structure, but they relate. So there's actually two within one. So there's chronological order, time, dates. Most of your history books, your social studies articles, they do a lot of chronological text structure. But if it's a recipe or a sequence of events that uses first, next, last words inside of the order of the, of the text, then it's going to be sequence of events. So that's one. Next is problem and solution. This is kind of easy. When there's a problem, think about science. There, there's problems within the earth. There's problems with climate. So that's a problem. If you are reading an article about global warming and climate change, there might be solutions inside of that article as well. That would be a problem solution text structure. They wrote it so there's a pro identified a problem, but there's also identified solutions. And that's kind of how you would want to read it. There's a problem, let's try to fix it. Okay, here are the solutions, moving forward. So there is a purpose to what you are reading, even in what problem solution. Next, you have cause and effect, showing how one event um, makes others happen in relationships between what happens as a result. So one thing causes this, and then there's effect to that. And last, you have compare and contrast. Easy, some things are similar, some things are different, and it's going to rotate in that article about those things. I hope you have learned something about text structure.